Hi guys, this is Dimitar Krstev Jimmy and in this short presentation I want to talk a little bit about rendering heavy geometry and more specifically the problems that you get when you have to render heavy geometry and even more specifically how you can use V-Ray to help you solve these problems. Okay, so as you can see I've opened my scene and uh, this scene is ahead of one of uh, our characters that we used uh, back in our studios. So if you check here the triangles in the scene, there are 18 million triangles in the scene and you'll see that even uh, navigating in the scene is very difficult and if I had to render this it will be impossible to do so I will run out of memory very quickly and I won't be able to render this uh, fortunately uh, V-Ray was developed a long time ago when we didn't have 64-bit machines and we didn't have it, uh, like many gigabytes of memory hundreds of gigabytes of memory back then we only had like two gigabytes and we had to do whatever we were able to do with those. So back then we invented something which is called the V-Ray Proxy and uh, it's also available in V-Ray for soft image. So let me show you how you can use it. Now to use it, uh, you need to select your geometry and uh, once uh, soft image realizes that I'm trying to select this, you go to File, Export and go to Export to V-Ray Mesh. And what this will do, it will take all this geometry and save it on a hard drive as a V-Ray mesh file. Uh, later you'll see, in the viewport, you'll see a representation of this geometry. And uh, you'll be able to work with it. It will have far less polygons. Actually, you can specify here with this option that says faces in preview. You can specify exactly how many polygons to be uh, used to preview this geometry. And you'll be able to work with it much easier and to render it much, much faster. And the reason you'll be able to render it much faster is because it will be saved on the hard drive. So at any given point, you'll only render uh, and have to ha render the geometry that is currently uh, being rendered in the small buckets. And you only have to have this geometry in the memory. So uh, I'm going to switch to one scene where I already have the proxy. It's this one. And... Uh, you see now the representation and you see how much easier it is to even navigate in the scene and you can see this point cloud which is the preview of the proxy. So uh, there is one thing that uh, I should point out and this is how you would optimize the rendering of these uh, proxies. As you know v renders uh, the image on uh, by subdividing it on small squares called buckets or um, they're also called render region divisions. So uh, by making these uh, buckets uh, smaller, you need to load less geometry in the memory and uh, you optimize the memory usage. So in my case, I have made them 16 by 16 pixels and I'm going to give this um, value of dynamic memory limit 4000, uh, which means that I'm giving V-Ray 4 gigabytes of memory to render this proxy. So right now when I hit render, uh, what will happen is V-Ray will start rendering the image and it will only load the, the parts of the geometry that are currently being uh, rendered by these small buckets. And uh, this is a great optimization because, as I told you, uh, you first of all uh, need less memory and even if you hit this memory limit that we specified with the dynamic memory limit, v will not crash. Instead, it will start um, uh, clearing the memory so it can free some memory for the new buckets to be rendered, but it will not crash and it will be able to render things uh, very, very quickly. And as you can see at this point, uh, this material that I'm using uh, has some glossy reflections. We have 18 million polygons and we're using this um, dome white. So we have an HDR in the environment that we're using to illuminate the scene. And even though uh, V-Ray is able to render this uh, very, very quickly. And I'm just going to render here the eye and the face. So you can see that it's exactly the same model that we had uh, previously. So this is uh, seems very simple thing but it's actually very, very useful and uh, you can use it uh, to optimize uh, rendering a heavy geometry and you can also export animated um, proxies. So if uh, I have a character that's being animated, I can export the whole animation and I can also export the velocity channel. So if I want to, I can create a motion blur later uh, in the final rendering. You can also get uh, almost any geometry out of um, basically you can get any geometry out of ZBrush for example or Moodbox and uh, save it to an OBG file and then convert this OBG file to a V-Ray mesh file that you can render inside of Softimage or Max or Maya, it doesn't matter it works uh, the same everywhere okay so uh, 
as you can see it's pretty quick and I just want to show you another uh, example where you can use the proxy so I'm going to open another scene here and in this scene I have this uh, proxy which uh, when I export it I didn't uh, specify enough faces in preview but you should trust me that this is an actual tree and uh, in this case uh, I have this uh, ice tree here and I'm using this ice tree to actually uh, I'm giving it the proxy and then uh, I'm making many instances of the proxy I'm scattering around this proxy around this grid so this is my grid and uh, I can make it denser so let's say 40 by 40 and I also want to make it a little bit bigger so I'm scattering those trees and with this node I can actually increase the number of trees to let's say 800 and you see that uh, I everything uh, happens instantly this is because uh, my proxies are being scattered by the ice tree so what I'm trying to point out here is that uh, V-Ray understands uh, this uh, ice uh, nodes and uh, you can uh, use the ice along with V-Ray and also what I have here is this um, randomized cover so basically the, the different proxies will have uh, different covers now a cool thing is that as you know this is all procedural so for example I can select this plane and maybe model it a little bit uh, so even though I have already scattered the proxies I have uh, more control and I can at any time change the way things look now this is a very simple example very simplified but uh, in your workflow you can of course create entire eco ecosystems with um, uh, with trees grass um, um, bushes and so on and so forth so let's see uh, I think I placed 800 so now we have 800 different uh, proxies uh, each each tree is around a couple hundred uh, thousand polygons and uh, we is able to render this very quickly at very low memory cost actually at very high memory efficiency because it's also very good at instancing this type of geometry so it's not loading uh, all those millions and millions of polygons that we're going to see it's only loading the proxy once and then uh, it's rendering it very very quickly so uh, to sum up the proxy is our a way of rendering uh, heavy geometry and we do, this, we do this by uh, saving this geometry on the hard drive and then loading this geometry on the fly only for the small buckets that you see being rendered here uh, this makes it possible for us to render like millions and millions of polygons very easily with uh, low memory uh, usage with high memory efficiency on almost any machine so uh, it's pretty useful and it will speed up uh, your workflows uh, very much and it also uh, works with uh, the ice trees so this uh, concludes my short presentation uh, I hope that was useful to you and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, until next time I'm Dimitar Christoph Jimmy and I thank you for watching